All right, Monday Fun Day. Welcome in the college basketball tip-off show powered by wagertalk.com. We got 19 games on the slate here today. Uh, the last bit of non-conference games and battles getting ready to take place this week. And then, of course, everyone gets off for Christmas, comes back, and they wait for those conference games. Uh, should be an awful lot of fun over the next couple of weeks. But there are a few games we absolutely want to break down for you on tonight's slate, and we'll do it with three of the best over at wagertalk.com. When it comes to college basketball, nobody better than Drew Martin in the house, ready to roll, as is Brian Power, BP, ready to go, and Mr. Rob Vino on this Monday here, gentlemen. A uh, lot, uh, lot going on in the world of sports uh, for the end of the year, but Man, college basketball is getting good in a couple of these games. We're going to take a look at, and we're going to start, Drew, with one of the bigger brands on the board here today, and that will be Michigan State taking on to Oakland. And, uh, boy, this is a big number here. What, uh, 15, 16 right now? Michigan State opened up that can of whoop-ass on Baylor a couple of days ago. Now they're laying more than two touchdowns. What are we doing with this one? Sure, Joe. I mean, a Tom Izzo uh, coach Michigan State team, uh, Horizon League versus the Big Ten here in uh, primetime matchup tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, 138 being the total. Can get them as low as minus 15 and a half. That's the way I would look here, Joe. On the Spartans, I would lay the number. One of the reasons why a top 10 defensive efficiency team, I think they're really going to hold Oakland at bay on the offensive side. And one thing I've had success betting college basketball is looking at the favorite. You know, when we get a, a situation like this, a, a bigger conference team, um, the more talented team, how did they perform against other teams really up against it, like outside the top 100? Well, Michigan State's played three of them already. They beat Georgia Southern by 31. They beat Alcorn State by 32. And they beat Southern Indiana by 23. All more than this 15 and a half number. That has me circling Michigan State here, Joe. They've shown kind of uh, in previous matchups to run up the score a little bit. And so 15 and a half, I think it's worth a, a small bet here. Lay it with the favorite. Two Michigan teams. This is Oakland um, from the state of Michigan having to travel over to East Lansing. I think it's uh, a little bit of little brother and big brother, if you will. I say that tongue in cheek, but uh, it put me, it puts me on the big brother in this situation. Give me the Spartans minus 15 in the hook here, Joe, for my big game breakdown. All right, there you go. Michigan State off and running here uh, today. Like you said, 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time tonight for that battle. BP up, ready to go here. You got an interesting one coming up uh, a little bit later today uh, with Bradley taking the Braves against Duquesne. What are we doing in this one tonight? Yeah, Joe, first off, this game is being played uh, not uh, too far down I-77 for me, Akron, Ohio, at LeBron James Arena. Now, mm. you may wonder, what are Duquesne and Bradley doing playing in Akron, Ohio? Well, the head coach of Duquesne is Keith D'Ambro. Guess who he coached in high school? LeBron James at Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary, of course. Uh, LeBron, unless if I've missed something, I don't think he's got any eligibility left, though, Joe. So uh, D'Ambro and Duquesne are going to have to do it without him. Here And I think this is a buy low spot on Bradley. So they're 0-4 straight up and against the number of their last four games. Three of those contests, interestingly enough, saw them go off as the favorite. They were even favored to beat an Indiana State team, Joe, that I know we were talking after the show last week. Uh, you have a lot of respect for. They're one of the top mid-majors in the country. And what's interesting, you look at Bradley, those four straight losses, they came on the heels of a perfect 6-0 and mm. uh, start to the season. So Bradley had been playing well, and now it's kind of seemingly all gone wrong. Uh, you, you look at the handicap here for the game. Duquesne, they do have the edge offensively, 58th in efficiency uh, at the offensive end versus 165th versus Bradley. But it was a poor shooting night against St. Peter's for uh, the Dukes. They were bailed out, though, at home by a 2-1 to edge in free throw attempts. Uh, that was the difference mm. in a nine-point win. I don't think even unless if LeBron's going to, you know, don the officiating the refs uniform, I don't think Duquesne can count on that uh, kind of free throw disparity here. Duquesne is not great defensively. They've allowed 77 points per game in three previous uh, contests away from home. 
even though the opponents have shot below 25% from the, uh, behind the arc. So uh, even with poor three point shooting from the opponents, they give up a lot of points. We should probably expect a lot of points here because each of the last nine neutral site games for Duquesne have gone over Bradley's eight and two to the over the season, but I'm going to back a desperate underdog getting points here. Joe Bradley, they ran into a hot shooting team last time out Cleveland state 10 of 19 from three. I don't think that's going to happen again on Monday. All right, there you go. Getting it done here, guys. Cruising along on this uh, Monday now, December the 18th. If you haven't done so already, smash that like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Become part of the Wager Talk TV family as uh, we've got plenty of content for you guys uh, to take a look at here and break down yourselves as uh, plenty of best bets all week long. Bowl season underway, NFL, college basketball, NBA, NHL, you name it. We've got it. We've also got another big game breakdown with Mr. Rob Vino ready to roll here today. And Vino, Murray State taking on Arkansas Little Rock here. Uh, which way are you leaning in this one? Something tells me maybe a total or is it a side you're looking at here? Yeah, well, it's probably an old pal of yours, Daryl Walker from the Knicks, <laughs> coaching at Arkansas yeah. Little Rock, Joe. I know you probably had his jersey as a kid. Um, <laughs> it's extreme <laughs> contrast in tempo here when you first look at it, right? You got a team that wants to get up and down. You got it in Arkansas Little Rock, and you got another team in Murray State that's been very, very methodical. Number 338 in the nation in adjusted offensive tempo. Sometimes these possession numbers, though, Joe, they a little bit misleading because they count overtime games and whatnot. So if you just look at how long it takes to shoot the basketball here, ULR wants to shoot it every 16.3 seconds, 70th fastest in the country. But Murray State's defense is going to force you to be patient. They rank number 355 in the country. It takes opponents almost 19 seconds to go ahead and shoot the basketball. So one fast, one slow. I think the biggest key here is going to be turnovers. Little Rock's pressure defense wants to turn you over to get that pace going. And Murray State just hasn't turned the ball over so far this season. They have, they have the 13th best turnover percentage in the country as far as protecting the basketball is concerned. So that'll be an interesting matchup there. This game could be as simple as home road dichotomies. Murray State, just on a three-game road trip, their only three true road games of the season. They lost all three straight up. But ironically, they lost all three of those by only four points. Four points, four mm. points, four points. They went one and two against the spread. The one cover was plus 16 against Mississippi State in Starkville. I mean, that's a good result. The other two, not so much. They were competitively lined games. Um, teams that are similar caliber to Little Rock, Illinois State, and Austin Pay, they lost both of those games. On the other hand, at home, and the schedule maker's been kind to Arkansas Little Rock. I mean, they played 11 games, and they played seven at home. Uh, no neutral sites, uh, not much away. So five and two straight up and against the spread at home, place where they're getting very, very comfortable right now. Their arena's you know, one of those smaller ones, 5,600 seats. So they um, at home have a really good home environment in those seven games. Here's what's interesting. At home, five of those have had closing lines between minus one and a half and plus one and a half. That's, mm. that's a lot of uh, very um, competitive competition. And it also fits right into what they have tonight, plus one against Murray State. Uh Arkansas Little Rock three and two in those two and zero oh in the other two home games that they uh, won, they were plus four and minus six and a half. So, you know, against teams uh, that are Murray State's caliber at home, they've been three and one against the spread. That's a pretty good number. In the end, I think Murray State. When you look at it, I always try to find these slow tempo teams. What they do against extreme tempo teams for Murray State, there's only been two opponents all season long that even sit inside the top 165 in tempo. Those two games were an 86-81 loss to Western Kentucky, who's ultra-fast, and then the 85-81 loss I talked about with Mississippi State. That's 167 and 166 points in both of those, but I'm going to avoid the total here. It's a pair of really bad defenses, 
competitively matched ball game, but I'm going to go with the team that's proven to cash tickets at home and take Little Rock plus one here against Murray State. All right, taking him, uh, taking Little Rock here, getting it done uh, tonight. That means we've got three best bets coming your way uh, on some of these games here tonight. Again, 19 games, not the biggest of slate. Doesn't mean, of course, that uh, we can't find a couple of edges for you guys to have. And we are going to go back to the top here and bring it back to Drew Martin, who I believe has got himself a 5% uh, NFL Monday night football bet available tonight. Uh, and also, uh, don't forget tomorrow, customer appreciation, uh, $2 packages across the board tomorrow. So make sure you come back and join us for that. Uh, but Drew, talk to us about a best bet here tonight and tell us what you got locked, loaded, and ready to roll over at wagertalk.com. Sure, Joe. What you were just teeing up there, guys, got a 5% going in uh, the NFL Monday night football game, Eagles and Seahawks tonight, wagertalk.com, 5% max limit. And I guess my second biggest bet for the night, giving it out now, best bets for the show, heading to Orlando, Florida here, Joe, Maine, the Black Bears at the mm. UCF Golden Knights. And we are seeing UCF minus 16 point favorites. I think it's too much here, Joe. Um, we can get Maine as high as plus 16, and we get the better free throw shooting team. Maine shooting 74% from the charity stripe. UCF, under that key number of 70%, just hitting 68% of their free throws. And actually, they're just four and five against the spread this season. They've lost four of their last six ATS. They've been overpriced. And Maine has won four straight, both straight up and against the spread. So we're getting the hotter team playing better basketball right now, the better free throw shooting team. And Maine's actually a team that I've had circled here. Their head coach, Chris Markwood, uh, they're in the America East. He started out his first year last year, very slow, under 500 overall. But if you look this year, guys, they're already out to the eight and four uh, overall record. They've gone on the road before. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, they went to Tampa, Florida, and beat UCF outright as an eight-point underdog. They beat them by 11. So the market was mm. really off on the main Black Bears just a couple weeks ago when they head to the Sunshine State. UCF, I think, is overrated, Joe. I really do. They're going to have a tough time. I was thinking this coming into the season, you know, making the switch to the Big 12 Conference, likely the best conference in basketball. I think they're going to be up against it all season long. I think we can make money going against them and i think it uh uh tonight is a great example to do so give me the main black bears plus the 16 here joe i think the dog is barking in orlando florida plus guys bonus pick here they're staying in florida and on thursday night they're playing fiu uh down in miami so just a short trip there i would look to uh turn around quickly and bet them in their next game against fiu as well that's on thursday joe Yep, good stuff there. A little overrated, those UFC nights here. Good opportunity to grab as many points as you can in this game also. Great opportunity for you to go to grab that 5% best bet of Drew's tonight in the NFL. Hop on board there as Brian Power get ready for a best bet here. And, uh, boy, this is uh, – you really picked a doozy here, didn't you? We got to go all the way to the <laughs> – extra board i think here because who doesn't love to talk about marist basketball but i guess uh you're gonna break that down for us talk to me here man yeah joe you have no idea how uh badly i wanted to uh, work uh, chicago state against the uh, rio grand valley into the show but alas i could only pick one and this is the one that we're going with here today now drew just a moment ago he talked about taking advantage of a line move that he doesn't agree with uh, you look at Maryland Eastern Shore at Marist here. The line has moved towards Maryland Eastern Shore, and I don't agree with that. I get that Marist has played a weak schedule at this point, but they've been covering the spread, Joe. Seven and one against the number this season are the Red Foxes. They've won four in a row, covered five straight. So they're handling their business as they should. And I understand that ATS record should come with a bit of an asterisk, if you will. There have only been three times where Marist has been favored in 2023. They laid six and a half to Bucknell, seven to Manhattan, one to Dartmouth their last time up. But guess what? They won all three of those games by double digits. And they've only played twice at home. That was Bucknell and Manhattan, their two biggest wins. They win by 24 and 14. And I think they can do the same again tonight against the Maryland Eastern Shore team that just doesn't do anything well. 
uh, outside the top 300 in defensive efficiency. Bottom 10 in the country in offensive efficiency are the Hawks. Only once in seven tries against D1 teams have the Hawks averaged a full point per possession. That is very, very bad. And speaking of bad, they only shoot it 31.5% from three. I don't think that's going to change here because Marist is holding teams at 27% from behind the arc. Red Foxes, a respectable 118 in defensive efficiency per Ken Palm. And you look at this Maryland Eastern Shore team away from home, Joe, five games they've played away from home. They've yet to stay within single digits of anyone. I know Marist isn't as strong as some of those previous opponents that the Hawks have faced on the road, but the revenge angle is in play here. Marist lost by 11 down in Princess Anne. That is where Maryland Eastern Shore's campus is located for those keeping score at home. I will lay it with Marist, minus nine and a half. We have seen some buyback on the Red Foxes, at least at one sharper book, up to 10. That is my best bet for the show today. All right, getting it done with Marist here tonight, laying the nine and a half. Certainly a good enough defensive team to get it done there. Uh, that leaves us Rob Vino ready to roll here tonight. And no doubt, Rob, uh, getting ready, not just for uh, college basketball, NBA, NFL, Bowl Week here this week. Give us a best bet here with Coastal Carolina and College of Charleston and tell us what you got locked and loaded, ready to roll here at wagertalk.com. Well, I'll start there, Joe, because I do have a 4% best bet on tonight's Monday night football action. Um, for those who have now 13 minutes left before kickoff of the college bowl game, I do have a free play up and available with analysis. You can check that out maybe help you decide one way or the other which way you want to go there. Um, let's get to this, though. The best bet, Joe, and again, I have to talk about something over, so let's look at this Coastal Carolina-Charleston game up and over the 157. And the good news here is that we have an earlier season meeting to draw from. These two teams mm. played each other on November 19th, exactly a month ago. Uh, Charleston laid nine. Total was 156. Game was played at Coastal's home arena. Final was 80 to 72. If you had a ticket on Coastal and a ticket on the under, you cashed them both. Things may change a little bit here. That game totaled 152 points, five shy of what we're asked to get to tonight. Actually, six shy if we want to get over and cash. Um, neither team shot the ball very well in that one. Coastal Carolina, 40.9% from the field. Charleston, 37.5% from the field. What's really interesting in that one is Charleston was 7 of 21 from two-point range, only 33% on two-pointers. And on the season, they shoot 50% from two-point range. If they had, you know, just up that 7 of 21 to 10 of 21, still under 50%, that game would have gone over tonight's 157 as well. Uh, the three-point defense for both of these teams, has been below average all season long. And Charleston, their offense is led by their three-point shooting. They had 17 in the first meeting. I don't know what Coastal does to change that here in this one. It probably will work again for them from three-point range. And Charleston's been on a real offensive surge as of late. Last five games, they've scored between 74 and 86 points. That averages out to 80.8, almost 81 per and the Coastal Carolina defense, which, you know, has happened to face a lot of fast-tempo offenses this year. They faced four of them. Wofford, of course, Charleston, I talked about Furman and Wichita State. All of those teams rank inside the top, I think it's 65 in offensive tempo. But they allowed defensively 88, 80, 89, and 86 points. So you can see 80-plus coming from Charleston here tonight. Those four games. Against those four teams, the final score landed 168, 169, 163, and 152. So you get the gist here. Coastal gives up a lot, and we need their help. But it seems mm. like lately their offense has been picking up two of their last three lined games. They had a non-line game in between. They scored 80 and 87, shot the ball really well, 46 and 51.6%. So I could see... Um, Coastal Carolina getting to the 75-plus mark here. They're a pretty good three-point shooting team. They sit inside the top 100 in the nation. The pace is going to be there. We got 73 possessions out of these two teams first time around, so 
can't figure for much different. Um, nothing's really changed between these two. And the hot streak that Charleston is on offensively, now on their home floor, got 80 at Coastal, probably get to 90 here. I think this number is just a little bit too low. It's been bet up somewhat. Opener was 55. Now we're looking at 57. But I think we'll get up and over 157 Coastal Carolina against Charleston. Should be a fun one. Pay certainly going to be there uh, tonight in that battle. Uh, Coastal uh, getting ready to take on College of Charleston. All right, our good friends over at the Gold Sheet, they've got themselves a best bet here tonight as well. And we highly encourage you guys to go over and check out our friends at the Gold Sheet. Great head-to-head -head matchup uh, content when it comes to uh, understanding uh, all the data and analytics you could possibly need to make decisions, including in this game tonight here, Jacksonville State at Tarleton State. And, yep, they're going to lay the five here with Tarleton State to get it uh, done. And for a couple of reasons, namely Jacksonville State, number 312 in turnover rate last season, and they are no better uh, this season coming in at number 313, while Tarleton State's defense has been top five so far in the country at forcing those turnovers. And they've been like that now over the last couple of seasons, which means extra free throws, extra points. Yeah, when you put it all together, guys, uh, Tarleton laying five, not a bad opportunity here tonight. You can catch this full write-up over at thegoldsheet.com. That'll do it for us on this Monday. It's a uh, much bigger card tomorrow in college basketball. We will certainly have you covered with a bunch of big game breakdowns and, of course, best bets. And don't forget, tomorrow is $2 Customer Appreciation Day, the final one of the year. Great opportunity for you to partner up with any of these guys for just 2 bucks. That's right. Best bets, daily packages, $2 all day tomorrow. So get ready for that. In the meantime, visit all three of these guys on their page at wagertalk.com. You heard Drew talk about a 5% best bet tonight in the NFL. Rob Vino also a 4% play in the NFL Monday night game, not to mention Brian Power locked and loaded. So we'll be back again tomorrow. Smash that like button. Come back and see us again tomorrow. Until then, best of luck with all your plays. We'll see you again soon.